Corn School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp Fungicide and Pride Seed. Bernard Tobin on the Corn School today at Agrimart in Thorndale, uh, joined by uh, Steph Kowalski. How's it going? Good, how are you? I'm pretty good, pretty good. It's kind of cold, um, but we're getting ready for planting. But uh, before we do some planting, I want to do some final checks on our nutrient plans. And uh, what better place to have that conversation than here in a dome um, at Agrimart. Let's talk a little bit about sulfur. Always a big discussion in wheat, whether we have enough sulfur. We've seen sulfur deficiency, lots of photos and lots of fields we've driven by. What's the situation in corn? I mean, especially with modern hybrids, a lot of nutrient demands. Where does sulfur fit? Yeah, that's a, a great point, Bern. Um, you know, we've kind of checked the box in wheat per se, uh, but in corn, we're, we're on to it. We know we need sulfur, but but the big question is how much, and and we're pushing yields to to record yields every year. So as we start moving that bar, uh, you know, we need to start looking at these micronutrients with a with a bigger magnifying glass, yeah. basically. Um, so a, a lot of great work came out of the University of Illinois and um, studying each nutrient, major macros and uh, and even major micros. Mm -hmm. And sulfur was a big surprise to me on there. Yeah. So what? How much? How much sulfur does or do these modern hybrids need? Yeah, so when we're pushing yields, you know, north of 180 bushels, burn, um, we're looking at 23, 25 pounds of sulfur, um, you know, and, and half of that is really neat. Half of that is is uptaken by silking. So the other half, when does that come in? We need that after silking. So, so early and late. Early and late, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is really important to, to note when we're looking at our nutrient plans. What about, um, Corn deficiency from a from a sulfur perspective. Um, what do you see? I mean, I know it's tough to diagnose because yeah. it's it's just a pale look, right? Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the literature says that sulfur deficiency is an overall yellow paleness, and mm -hmm. well, that can be pretty tough when you're out there. That can look a lot like nitrogen. Yeah. But uh, really, the big giveaway with sulfur is is it tends to follow topography. So um, that's when drones come in really handy to get that overhead look. Um, but you know, when when the corn is is still small enough, you can see the knolls, and usually that's my first giveaway. We'll get on the knolls and, and low organic matter, and all of a sudden we're seeing some sulfur deficiency. Mm. And that's what I was going to ask you. What about, you know, what fields should we be watching for? I mean, and what should we be looking for in our uh, soil test? That our organic matter is key, right? Yeah, exactly. So organic matter mineralizes sulfur exactly like it, it gives us nitrogen. So uh, higher organic matter fields, we're at less of a, uh, of a risk of nitrogen, or sorry, sulfur deficiency. Mm. Um, but uh, also we get into sandy soils, low CEC. Uh, um, we have to think of sulfur a lot like nitrogen. It moves through the soil profile, so we're at risk for loss. So um, anytime that we're, we're at risk of losing nitrogen, we're at risk of losing sulfur. So low organic matter, low CEC soils, we should be uh, targeting sulfur applications season long there. Yeah. Um, I guess the big question is how do we counteract or how do we manage our soils to sort of make sure we don't, don't run into that deficiency? When you look at, you know, products, here we are mm. uh, at Agrimart, there's lots of options here. When should we be applying sul sulfur? And I guess to say, what's what's the best method or, you know, the best application strategy? Yeah, so if half of our sulfur is being uptaken by before silking and the other half after silking, um, you know, we need that, that season long. So we need something in our starter early on to get that corn, um, you know, through until uh, later season. We've invested a lot of money in top dressing equipment and you know we're knifing in every sort of uh, you know liquid fertilizers things like that so we can get sulfur in uh, you know luckily being that it's mobile we can get it in a lot through the season but um, we can't forget we need it early on with that with that starter whatever it might be liquid or, or dry and then uh, you know we need to keep spoon, spoon feeding it through the season whether it's through a top dress application or a side dress application so Steph, any tips on you know some things growers can do this summer to maybe get a better sense of whether they've got an issue with sulfur? Yeah, that's a, a really important point, Vern. Um, you know, we've done it in wheat for years. We're pushing our end rates, so we've started pushing our sulfur rates and and doing some strip trials in corn. Um, you know, we pushed our nitrogen rates in corn. Now we need to start doing some strip trials, uh, pushing our sulfur rates to go with it. So, you know, increasing those rates as we grow across the field and and uh, see what we see is is a great uh, great plan of action. Um, you know, as well as pulling some tissue tests yep. in those strips uh, and and diagnosing you know where our tissue levels are at for sulfur. Yeah. Uh, well, hey, great stuff. 
Thank you for your time. Always uh, and thanks for the invite. Always great to get down here. Um, before long, we'll be planting and we'll see you out there. Yeah. <laughs>